Hello everyone, um, thank you for tuning in to Ask a Doc. My name is Joyce Mbogo, I'm a pediatrician and pediatric endocrinologist. I am part of the team that takes care of children who have uh, diabetes and endocrine conditions at, uh, at MPSHA. Now remember I've talked about being part of a team because when we talk about diabetes mellitus and endocrine conditions, we deal with them as teams. That includes most specifically the patient, the caregivers and us the healthcare providers. Now when we talk about the healthcare providers, it's not only the pediatric endocrinologist, but also the nutritionist, the nurse, um, and the counselors. So just know, when it comes to endocrine and diabetes, it is a team approach, more specifically starting off with the patient that you're dealing with. Thank you for tuning in again to Ask a Doc, and also thank you for um, sending questions um, for us to be able to respond. Our first question is, what is diabetes mellitus and does it happen in children? So to discuss that, diabetes mellitus is a condition in which someone who eats anything that is actually starch is unable to deal with the sugar within the body. Now, so the bottom line, irrespective of the type that you have of diabetes, the bottom line is that you have very high sugar. Now in type 1 diabetes, which is the most common cause of type of diabetes in children, the reason why children have very high sugar is because they're unable to produce enough insulin to be able to manage the sugar. Now the main aim of sugar in our body when we eat it, irrespective of whatever starch that we eat, is to give us energy. So if you do not have insulin, you're not able to use the sugar to produce energy. So these children who have diabetes mellitus are unable to produce energy because as much as they're eating, that sugar is not getting into the cells and being able to produce energy. So how do they usually present? So that is our next question, is how does a child with diabetes mellitus present? Now a child with diabetes mellitus presents by one, peeing a lot, that now would mean a child who is maybe eight or nine months. Mother will notice that she's ended up having to use many more diapers or a larger size of diapers. For a child who was actually dry, notice starting to have accidents, not only during the day, but also at night. Something else that they usually go through is um, drinking a lot of water. And the reason why they're drinking a lot of water is because there's so much sugar in the body and therefore the body feels very concentrated and automatically asks them to keep drinking a lot of water. Next thing that happens is that they lose weight. And the reason why they lose weight is because their body feels very starved. I have sugar that I want to use to produce energy, but unfortunately cannot use that because I don't have insulin. And therefore keeps telling the body, break down more sugar. And as you break down more sugar, you lose weight because you're breaking down sugar. But you see, it's a vicious cycle. Here you are breaking down sugar, but you're unable to, pro to use your sugar to produce energy. The last thing that they usually, if you delay to come to the hospital, um, children present with is belly pain and vomiting. Usually by the time a child is coming in with abdominal pain and, uh, and vomiting, they have gotten to the critical aspect of the, in the presentation of type 1 diabetes. When they come in, it's pretty simple. They just need to be checked a blood sugar. If the blood sugar is found to be 11.1 and above, they are diagnosed as having type 1 diabetes. But to diagnose it, you need two things. You need to have the symptoms, which is polyuria, drink, peeing a lot, polydipsia, which is drinking a lot, weight loss, and if you can have additional tummy pain and vomiting. Blood sugar, which can be gotten from any lab anywhere, any chemist, yeah, or even a, a hospital. If you check the blood sugar and you find it to be 11.1 and above, then you diagnose a person having type 1 diabetes. So the next question is, how do you manage children who have diabetes? Now, they, it's very simple. We try and mimic exactly what happens to someone who does not have diabetes. But let me repeat the third question. How do you manage um, a child who has diabetes mellitus? you mimic what happens to someone who doesn't have diabetes. Meaning that when someone who doesn't have diabetes, they eat starch, it is broken down into sugar. Once it's broken down into sugar, the body responds by producing a chemical called insulin. Now insulin is the one that is responsible for removing the sugar from the blood 
to the body so that it can go and produce energy. So what we do is mimic that by giving the child insulin. It is very different from type 2 diabetes because type 1 diabetes, they don't have insulin. So you need to give them insulin. What else do you need to do? You need to make sure the child is a child, that the child eats a healthy diet. We don't have diabetic diets, we have healthy diets. So that means they need to eat starch, they need to eat protein, they need to eat vegetables, they need to eat fruits. They need to eat a very healthy diet, just like the rest of the family members. What else do they need to do? They need to monitor their blood sugars so that we know are we giving them enough insulin right are we being able to control the sugar remember when we give them insulin the insulin allows us to make sure we use our sugar to produce energy and then the rest of that is extra is stored for a use for much later so in terms of management it is so important to make sure you treat the child as a child allow the child to eat a healthy diet but in addition to that you need to give insulin each time that your child is eating starch to be able to manage the sugars. I've talked about what is diabetes. We've talked about how it presents in children with polyuria, polydipsia, and uh, weight loss. We've talked about how to diagnose it and how we manage it. But now we go and switch boards to talk about this other thing called the endocrine system. Now, to understand the endocrine system, you need to know what is the endocrine system. Now, the endocrine system is made up of glands that make up hormones, that make hormones. Now, these glands, or what we call factories, are everywhere within the body. They release what we call hormones or chemical messengers that they go to different parts of the body to send messages to those organs so that they can be able to function properly. Now, once they travel through the bloodstream from their factory to the different organs, it tells them how to function. Give an example. It tells the heart to increase your heart rate. It tells, the, it tells my pancreas when I've eaten a starch to release insulin so that I can be able to manage my sugars. So that is part of the endocrine system. In other words, it actually balances how the body functions. Now, too much chemical or too little chemical or what we call hormones is when we talk about children having endocrine conditions. But your question as a parent is, so how do I tell that my child has an endocrine problem? And the way to be able to tell that your child has an endocrine problem is to go back to the basics. Many of us, when we delivered and had our children, were given these wonderful books called the Mother and Child Book. Now in this book, it's not a book just to carry around, but this book gives you a lot of information. But I want us to go an extra step to understand what does that height mean for your child? What does that weight mean for your child? What does that head size mean for your child? Why? Because if you find out that your child is not growing well, that their height is not maintaining to where it was before, then you know that your child is not growing well. That means your child is having short stature. And that would be a common presentation of an endocrine condition. What else? You'll notice that your child when was born was good weight, 3.5, had been gradually gaining weight, but slowly has stopped gaining weight and seems to be crossing down the percentiles or the lines that you can be able to see in this book. Once you start noticing that your child's weight seems to be crossing this line, that is a sign that your child may have an endocrine problem and therefore needs to be investigated in terms of that because hormones play a big role in ensuring that you gain adequate weight. Another example is that you actually be taking your child's height. Now, if your child comes from a tall family, but somehow you find your child does not seem to be gaining enough in terms of their height, you will notice that they'll be crossing again down these lines. Now, when you notice that a child's height is actually crossing these lines, then you talk about growth failure. And this is a very common presentation in children who may have endocrine problems. So I'll go back to basics. Go back to your mother and child book. Make sure each time you go to the clinic or into the hospital that they plot it on the curve. And if you notice that your child seems to be crossing the percentile, that is a common presentation that your child is having a problem and therefore needs to be investigated. Another example of endocrine problems is when you notice that your child seems to be developing either as a lady or as a gentleman 
earlier than what he intended them to be. Now, to, to know when is early is for me to define to you when is normal puberty. Now, normal puberty is when a girl starts developing to become a lady from eight years. The first sign for normal puberty for a girl is having breast development. What about boys? It is normal for a boy to start developing as a gentleman at the age of nine years. And the first sign generally for boys is usually nine years and is usually the test is starting to grow big. So if you have noticed that your child seems to be developing breast before eight, seems to have pubic hair, seems to smell with that adult body odor, those are signs that there's something going on within your child's body and also signs that the endocrine system is not working well. Keep in mind, normal puberty starts at eight four years for girls and normal puberty for boys starts at nine years for at nine years so if they have started earlier than that then there's something on and they need to be investigated to ensure that they know what they what we're dealing with now the last part that you're going to discuss is about obesity now in these COVID times a lot of our children have gained slightly more weight than we want them to gain and that is true i want us to see any child who is more than two years it is important for you to make sure that they are measured both the height, weight, and eventually calculated the BMI. Once you calculate the BMI, there's a BMI chart that WHO has actually published for us to use. Now, if your BMI is between plus two and minus two, then your BMI is within the normal range. But if you find that your BMI is above plus two, then your child is either overweight and obese. I encourage you to ensure first, find out what your child's BMI is, find out if it is appropriate for the age, find out if it is overweight and obese, and if it is, I want to encourage us parents to become more proactive in first finding out is the child, the reason why your child is having obesity and overweight an endocrine issue, and if it is not an endocrine issue, I would really want to encourage you to work on ensuring that the child does not stay overweight and obese, because what we do know, Children who stay overweight and obese as children become overweight and obese as adults and are at a very high risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So if we can do something about it while they're children, I would want to strongly encourage parents to do that, to intervene, to make sure that we manage our overweight and obese children to prevent them from developing type 2 diabetes when they become the next generation or when they become adults. So thank you very much uh, for tuning to Ask a Doc. I hope I have clarified the most common presentations of endocrine conditions in children. In case you have any more questions or clarifications, please feel free to note it down and we will respond to you shortly. Thank you and uh, God bless you.